Hello everyone, this is Kim with Abundant Life Tarot, and we are doing an unboxing. And let's just go and get right on into it. I already had to open the, the box up. So, what we're unboxing today is the Queen of the Moon Oracle by Stacey DeMarco. It says, Guidance Through Lunar and Seasonal Energies. This is a Rockpool Publishing deck. Or, pub, yeah, Rockpool Publishing. And let me see if I can reach all the way over to my thing in my bobber. Can't even talk. So I pre-ordered this some time ago. And I'm just... I got impatient. I canceled the pre-order on Amazon and decided to do my pre-order through Barnes & Nobles and I seem to have better luck with that um, when I go the Barnes & Nobles route. Um, but what I ended up doing, not really accidentally, but kind of in my impatience, I, I ordered this one some time ago and then I ordered another one thinking I could like beat the system because I saw that one was available at my local store so I tried to get that particular one and I think I, I was like one person too late so it was sold out so now I have another one on its way to the store and I'm going to do a giveaway because it's been a while since I've done a giveaway and I thought this would be a nice one to do, especially if I end up getting like really digging it. You know, I love doing giveaways of decks that I'm like, okay, I think someone would really appreciate that deck. And I have a particular moonstone that I'm going to have going for the giveaway. So more to come on that. That'll be in another video. Um, so yeah, we'll take a look. Bishop is eating up the box. So here's the Rock Pool Publishing Deal. It is a solid box. It is um, not your typical Rock Pool Publishing. Normally they have. Actually, let me grab it. Oh, sitting next to one. I'm going to grab a couple of things here. A few for some comparison's sake. Because I think that'll be fun to do. All right, sorry for all the wiggly motion. So here we have a typical Rockpool Publishing box where it's got the magnetic opening. And here you got this pattern and you've got the guidebook that sits inside, of course. Uh, you got some beautiful full page um, pictures, images of the cards, and then you've got this size card, and it's glossy, so that's what we normally see with the, you know, with the Rockpool Publishing situation, and I have to say, I, for a glossy deck, they do, the Rockpool does a very good job with them, I can still riffle shuffle it. it, it holds up so nicely, I've used this deck quite a bit in both readings for myself and others and it's still in really good pristine condition in my opinion it holds up really well it's, it's good stock despite its shininess but I would prefer matte because I do most of my readings if not all actually 100% of the time on well not 100% but I'd say 95% online so the glare is a bit much and it's interesting that Rockpool has changed from this deal, this size, to this size. And, which I'm not really mad at. We'll just see what, what else is going on here. So we have... Oh, Looks like they have an app of some sort. Let me take that. Here's, they have smaller images, color images, and it's not glossy book like this glossy book. This is like so nice, so nice. Okay, now I wanted to compare. 
hair. That's their normal size. Looks like maybe they might be changing. Um, here is the Monology, which is a Hay House deck. So if we compare these two, this one's just a hair. Queen of the Moon Oracle is just a hair taller, but almost the same width, pretty much. So that's interesting that they've changed course there. And let's just slip that right on off. And here are the backs. It's still glossy. Which, if it's as good as cardstock as my other um, Rockpool publishing decks, I, I now only have one Rockpool, or now this is my second one, but I sold a couple of them uh, recently. But they were great decks, I just wasn't really vibing with them anymore. Yeah, but great stock. I want to look at that. I love the moons. So pretty. So, so pretty. And of course, can't, I mean, if you really care, I guess you can't really do reversals, but who cares? I mean, that's not, shouldn't be an end all be all for, or a, you know, the reason why you don't get it. A deck, in my opinion, but that's just my opinion. Here is the cards. And we'll look at the guidebook afterwards. I just kind of want to take in the cards for a moment. Try not to get some glare. So, Dark Moon, The Void. Oh, I love that she's laying here. The Void. Mm. New Moon Beginnings. Pretty. Oh my gosh. Waxing Crescent One Realization. This is one of the images I saw online that enticed me to get it. I definitely appreciate like a whimsical art style. I'm finding that my art style, like I I can appreciate many different styles, which is why I have so many decks, but once that I'm like, oh yeah, I'm sold. It's usually ones that have a whimsy touch. Here's Waxing Crescent 2, Acceptance. Waxing Crescent 3, Growth. This reminds me of the Oracle of Mystical Moments. I think that's a U.S. Games Oracle, and it has that essence about it and I love it. Waxing Crescent 4 Self Love. Oh, I love this. What I really appreciate about this particular deck, and I guess it's also in the other moon that's in the Moonology Oracle, is that they they yes, they have the Waxing Crescent 4, the number, they have the the right there in the moon. And then they have a beautiful little keyword that you can also, okay. I'm seeing, I'm getting the energies here written and then also, you know, in the image. And it's just so beautiful. Understated as well, in my opinion. So pretty. Waxing Crescent 5, Nourishment. Hmm, Nourishment. It's an interesting word. I like it. Waxing Crescent Six, The Path. Look at that. She's going to climb up this little ladder and to climb into that image. First Quarter Moon, Assessing. A time to assess. Waxing Gibbous One, Discernment. I like that. Between 
living in oh two worlds, two universes, oh so many dimensions. Hmm, very happy I got this deck. Let's see, waxing gibbous to fear. Oh, isn't that amazing? Oh my goodness. I don't know if the camera can even do it justice. Okay. Waxing Gibbous 3. Boundaries. Now this is a lovely card. And I love it. I think it's really pretty. But. I guess you could say you're setting up gentle boundaries. But this isn't normally a depiction of boundaries that I'm used to seeing. Not saying it's good or bad. We'll see how it works in the readings. I usually just kind of go with what my gut tells me to do. In a particular reading. But. If I like saw the word boundaries and I'm looking at this, eh, I don't know if I'm necessarily seeing it. The only thing that is a boundary here is this like glass. And I don't know. I don't know. If if there was one little little thing I just have to say about this deck. It's like, okay, well, glad they have a boundaries card. Yes. But Am I sold on that depiction of a boundary situation? Mm, not quite. Almost not quite. Waxing give us four. Will. It's beautiful. Pulling like the curtain back onto your destiny. Mm. Waxing give us five focus. Mm, it's beautiful. Mm. Waxing give us six action. Oh, I love that. She's in action. And, and you can see, whereas for me, like with boundaries, this is like kind of, I don't know doesn't quite deliver for that that meaning that keyword but this does right it's action it's dancing is expression and you know it's just another form of action and sometimes it's beautiful and flows so easily for us and other times it's one you know we lumber around and it's not so elegant and we could even hurt ourselves but nevertheless we're dancing we're taking action i really like that full moon power but what i will say i keep going back to this boundaries card because i i love the word boundaries is such an important theme and in, in the society that we live in right now um, and the times we're living in right now. And it never really goes out of style. It's boundaries. You need them. So it's an, an important theme, of course. But what I appreciate about this deck is that some of the images show people kind of static and just kind of sitting there and you're just kind of looking at it. But this at least is a scene. There's something going on. She's setting up a healthy boundary. And we have waxing give us one self reflection. Hmm. Waxing give us two pleasure. Let's see how many cards does it say? Forty four cards, similar to like a hay house deck. Balance, waning give us three. Beautiful. Waning give us four beauty. I know some people like who've done a like a walkthrough of this deck kind of took ish take issue with this card or took issue with this card. I actually really like it. I don't know why. I love that you see the moon here. You know how like you can sometimes in the daytime, you know, like on a beautiful California summer's day 
and you know in the morning and you're driving and you see that beautiful moon sitting there and it's it's just everything's blooming and it's beautiful it's like i get it so pretty it, yes moon in the daytime moon in the daytime waning give us five resilience hmm. wow this is an image wisdom waning give us six Last quarter moon, gratitude. And I had also mixed feelings about this deck. On one hand, it's like, I, it's, so, it's so funny. What I like about it is also kind of what like turns me off. <laughs> Isn't that weird? That's so weird. Um, I don't know why. But <laughs> so the hands. So normally in the other images, let me see. Okay, this is a real person, but okay, we have, I guess this person is, yeah, it's a real person too. I don't know, it's just so up close and personal with these hands right here. And it's, you know, it's already my hands in the, in the reading. And then you've got these hands. It's just, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how I feel about this card, but I love a gratitude card, so... You know, it, it will work with that. Waning Crescent One, protection. Oh, I really like this one. I really do. Even as adults, we need a little protection too. Okay. This hand isn't so bad. She's got a, it, well, oh, yeah, I guess she's, yeah, I don't know, the manicure thing. Waning Crescent Two, resistance. <laughs> being silly today I've been so silly and I'm happy I've had so many silly moments when, when in fact I need to be serious for certain things that were going on today but I couldn't I just couldn't <laughs> I couldn't okay waning crescent three surrender it's beautiful oh look at that you can see the light and oh shining through or cloth there her material so pretty waning crescent for release hmm waning crescent five peace wolf moon hunger I like that I like a good hunger card in a deck. I don't know if I have many that have that keyword. Snow moon. Purity. It's pretty. Oh, I love this one. Worm moon. Faith. I adore this one so much. Such a diverse deck, which I appreciate. Egg moon. Trust. Any and whimsical. Flower moon blossoming. Okay, this is another one. Hot moon extremes. Okay, so I think it was um, Kelly from The Truth and Story. She, I was chuckling when I watched her walk through of this deck. Bishop, go. Stop hitting the tripod. Oh, he keeps trying to play with the ball underneath the tripod. Stop it. Um, and she talked about it. She's like, he just seems hot. And I, <laughs> it made me laugh out loud. But I see what she means. It's like, okay, stop hitting it. Not right now, Bishop. No. He's hitting the tripod. See, this is the thing about Jack Russell Terriers. They're super smart. He knows, like he's hitting my tripod because he knows it's getting my attention with his silly little ball. We're almost done here. Go. Dante, uh, can you call Bishop? Bishop. 
Thank you. Look, it's a piece. It says extremes. I do like the keyword. This card will probably grow on me. I don't see it prohibiting me in any way to using this deck or causing me to be turned off. That Not at all. Quite the opposite. <laughs> I'm getting like those, oh gosh, you remember those? They were really big in the 80s maybe. And they're probably still big today. I just read them when I was a young person. Uh, you know those romance novels? No, Bishop. Go. Those romance novels. And they have like, oh, I can't think. Unbridled Passion. You know, it's a title. And it's got Fabio as like the model in it. It's pretty funny. I used to read those stories as like a kid, my friend and I, and we would read the stories and then we would use our dolls, our Barbie dolls or whatever, and reenact the stories, <laughs> which is funny to me that I would do that. And then, as if that wasn't enough, we would sometimes rewrite parts of the story that we thought should be like like just completely written over and if we could write it. And we wrote some really good stuff. So, I I, <laughs> I literally laughed out loud because I, I totally saw exactly what she was talking about. Thunder Moon, change. Wow, that's, that's what I'm talking about. I love that each image is like doing its own thing. Whereas I'm going to do a comparison in a moment to my other moon deck that I have here. Green Corn Moon, Patience. Adore this one. Somehow the red balloon kind of freaks me out a little. Only because we are getting off of Halloween. And yeah, one of my bosses was um, Pennywise from It. Quite scary. And I'm not even one of the, I, I love horror. That's my thing. But uh, yeah, I was a little freaked out. Harvest Moon. Fruition. Oh, so pretty. Getting very much that Oracle of Mystical moments. I wish I had it downstairs. I have it upstairs. I do a comparison. I probably, you guys, I'm going to do a, a Oracle combo or a tarot combo with those three decks. This one, the Oracle of Mystical moments, and probably a tarot that goes nicely with them hunter moon abundance isn't that gorgeous perfect timing for those in the northern hemisphere so pretty beaver moon creation those are um it's like you know architects way to go oh my god you know what I'm talking about. Blueprints. Oh my gosh, it was going to drive me crazy. Blueprints. Long night moon darkness. Oh, I love that. So pretty. Here's the cover. Sovereignty. Queen of the moon. Yes. Lunar god, the masculine. I'm gonna really, I think I'm gonna really enjoy using this deck, honestly. Blue Moon, the Unexpected. Hmm. Super Moon, Attraction. So, yeah, we have. I just wanna see how it shuffles. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I like that they're a little bit smaller than the bigger ones because oracles are already kind of big and I do use oracles in my readings. So, and tarot, so it's nice to have them be a smaller size than bigger, but not too small. Like my Mildred Payne is kind of challenging sometimes because you can fit lots of them, but the problem is, oh, I'm 
it's in the blue moon. The problem is you got to zoom in, zoom out. And if you're using other cards to go with your Mildred Payne and they're regular size, and then it's just kind of awkward sometimes. But I love the Mildred Payne so much. Anyway, so I digress. Okay. So we have once in a blue moon, the unexpected. So I'm going to take this opportunity to look at the guidebook now. So we'll look at the meaning here. But first, let's see. It's got a table of contents. And it goes numbered, which is nice. It has a preface, an introduction, and how to use the card section, and then the meanings. Then an about the author and about the illustrator. Let's see, the illustrator is Kinga Britsky, is a Hungarian artist who has lived in her, with her American husband and son in, in the United States since 1995. Interesting. And we know about Miss Stacy DeMarco. She talks about the full moon, the waning moon, new dark moon. So it says some descriptions. For example, for full moon, the moon is full in the sky, full energy, often a time when people find it hard to sleep or sleep extra deeply. Dreams are, oft, are often more vivid and easily remembered. Should you set intentions during this moon, it will give you this is says high impact results and is perfect for attraction spells of any type. I won't keep going. Then she talks about waning moon, new or dark moon, waxy moon. Author's notes. Um, cool. How to use the cards. And she has some spreads here, the four elements spread, the full moon, three card draw, traditional seven card spread, cool, full lunar cycle spread, seasonal spread, and a dedication for your cards. This is number 43. It says, no matter how well you plan, there's always room for the unexpected to occur. Build your resilience as rare occurrences can happen. A visitor you have not seen in a long time may re-enter re your life. An old, oh, and then there's a little like, affirmation. I trust in myself and in life. An old farmer's almanac, a blue moon was described as the third full moon in a season that has four full moons. The newer and now more accepted description is that a blue moon is when there are two full moons in one calendar month. Either way, it is a rare occurrence and has inspired the same once in a blue moon when describing an event or behavior that only becomes, only happens, I'm sorry, that only happens rarely. The energy and power of the blue moon can be best taken advantage of by setting intentions on these moons of things that you really want but have never felt could happen. I refer to big wishes, the almost miracle stuff we would be both delighted and surprised about if it manifested. After setting blue moon intentions, though, don't sit there hoping it will just happen. Try to take clear practical steps towards these big, seemingly far-fetched intentions and help the universe along. Some of us love surprises, some of us don't. But I don't think anyone can go through life without sometimes having the unexpected happen to them. While some professions in particular, such as military and me medicine, try to plan for everything that could go wrong, life sometimes finds a way to outsmart the most thorough of plans. This is simply life. Although it is important for us to know where, how, and why we are traveling down a particular path, we should always make room for and expect the unexpected. And then she has a companion stone or metal. Uh, what is this? Benet, Benetoit? I don't know that one. It says a very rare blue gem. Interesting. So I like the guidebook, but I think I'd probably read it once through and then just kind of throw it to the side and just with this particular deck. Um, so 
just read intuitively with it. I pulled out this one because I got this one, the Monology Oracle Cards, maybe a few weeks ago, and I've been using it here and there when I'm called to. Sometimes I'm like, it helps with like good timing things when people are like, well, when should I do this? And when should I do that? Well, let's consult something that kind of gives us a little more concrete information on time, such as, you know, a moon cycle. And yeah, I like it. But there's some things I don't like about this deck. What I do like about it is it's matte, whereas this one is glossy. However, this one shuffles a little bit easier, surprisingly, than this one. When I shuffled this one, it clumps up. Um, I have not did an, I don't think I did an unboxing. This is the first one I have not did an unboxing or have not even featured really yet in my videos. Normally, right off the bat, I do an unboxing. And the reason is, with this one, I wanted to see if I was actually going to use it or not. And feel, feel out how I was going to use this. And if I was going to use it. And do a, like a deck and focus with it. So, more to come on this. We'll see. Because the verdict's still out, honestly. So, it has here, be bold and make the first move. The cardinal moon. So, it has different moons that it covers. Then... This particular one they probably have some similar moons but there's some that are not and I decided I wanted to start collecting um, I wanted to, in my collection I want to have like two two of my favorite crystal oracles um, two of my favorite moon decks or three of these kind of decks maybe a couple of astrological oracle decks I kind of want to just have one or two that speak to me, and that's it. So I tried these two to see how I'm feeling with them or dealing with them, and yeah, like this one, not such a fan of this image. But I like the weird keywords. It sometimes bothers me too. The keywords are not that great, full moon and Virgo. But so far, the purpose is that I'm using it for now in my readings it's working and I can see that you could probably you could probably work with um, work with both of these decks in a reading because you know they could speak to different things it says abundance hunter moon and then be bold and make the first move towards prosperity lies ahead new moon in Taurus you know you have the wisdom. You can reach for the stars to um, get, gain your prosperity. You just need to actually start utilizing that wisdom that's already around you. Um, that's already, you know, within your reach. Um, I like it. So you could use these together if you wanted to. Take time to breathe. Oh, look at this. I'm doing a oracle combo video in with my unboxings making quite a long video waxing gibbous discernment take time to breathe out dis disseminate disseminating moon i like that you, you need to be discerning by expending your energy and take time to breathe oh, so pretty so yeah, I'm thinking I'm going to like my moon decks, to be honest with you. And I'm now feeling a little more confident about maybe including this deck into the um, giveaway. It was only going to be this one because of how things worked out, but I'm thinking I might add this one as well and make it just a big old moon fest <laughs> where, you know, the winners get each one or the other um, and then yeah, we'll add some moonstone for good measure to go with their beautiful decks and I'm looking forward to it so stay tuned for that in a future video so yeah there you guys have it this is the oracle of the moon or excuse me oracle of the moon 
wish it was queen of the moon oracle guidance through lunar and seasonal energies it's Stacy DeMarco really think I'm going to enjoy using this deck and I also adore Stacy DeMarco's Halloween Oracle adore this deck so much it's going to be hard for me to stop using it I know you could use it year round but I'm kind of that weird one that doesn't like to use seasonal decks year round I don't know why it's weird um <laughs> but yeah I if if she put her heart and soul into this one like I feel like she did with this one yeah we're gonna we're gonna be in business all right all right you guys well thank you all so so much for watching my long video and give me your thoughts on the queen of the moon oracle or even the moonology oracle and yeah all right i'll see you all around bye